how I became homeless. Well, because it all started um, uh, before before 2020 happened. Um, I was living paycheck to paycheck, same job for over 12 years. And uh, I had a second job as well. So I had one that worked full time, then I had a second job that worked part time. Well, it was kind of like full time. Uh, it was basically almost like two full time jobs, except for I got paid uh, part time money. Um, you know, I guess it's, it's better than nothing. But uh, yeah, it, it didn't pay very much, and I did put a lot of work in. And I'll explain that. So the first full time job was I was in the medical field for over 12 years. And uh, I was living paycheck to paycheck, nothing extra. I drove a bucket, it was literally a bucket was, you know, probably better than uh, the vehicle I had. Uh, my vehicle was over 20 years old, um, not reliable. Uh, man, it was, you know, I could never buy any extras. But, I mean, extras is, is you know, during, uh, you know, when I did grocery shopping, I didn't pick up ice cream. Everything was off-brand off -brand and generic stuff. And uh, I had to get a second job because of uh, literally uh, uh, how much housing cost. So, you know, it cost a lot. And uh, I, um, you know, was working, uh, working a whole lot, you know. And uh, so I had to have two jobs. And then I also uh, would go ahead and uh, take a little projects on. So the first job was a medical field, um, uh, being a caretaker. Um, the second job was... Um, uh, making websites for a company, doing marketing for a company, um, and setting a whole lot of stuff up. And that person just happened to be very cheap. You know, I started off doing data entry and then it, you know, progressed a whole lot more. Uh, at the time, um, you know, data entry, of course, I knew, I knew how to do that. You know, we were, um, I was adding stuff from um, their old CRM, which is their customer, uh, customer relationship management. Basically their back office uh, stuff. I was taking that and then I was putting it into a new CRM that they were transferring. I was doing that. And then uh, slowly but surely like, hey, your old website, did you know that I sent you an email through there and you never responded? You know, your old website doesn't work anymore. It's old code or it wasn't done right. Okay, you want me to build you a website, you know? So I did that as well. Uh, there's a whole lot of stuff with that. There's a lot of other stories I, I'll talk about that in uh, future uh, long form content. But um, then, uh, you know, uh, people would be like, hey, I like that website or I'm thinking about buying a website too. You know, um, you know, what can you do for me? There were, uh, some of them were WordPress websites, some of them were Wix websites. ClickFunnels was huge. People want, all wanted ClickFunnels, so they would hire me to do it. And I guess, uh, you know, I would, I would take it and I would hope to, um, you know, start off slow and then build up with them. And the truth is, is a lot of them were cheap. And uh, I set my prices, so it is what it is, you know. Uh, but it just wasn't a lot of money, you know. But not a lot of money for, for a lot of work that I did, So, which, which was okay. I was, you know, at that point, it was like, you know, uh, the first job uh, paid for, uh, you know, rent, paid for, for everything that I needed, but I never had anything extra. Now with the new money, okay, now it's time I can go ahead and start saving up for a newer vehicle. Now I can go ahead if I want ice cream one day, or, you know, let's say that I didn't want to cook a top ramen and mix it with tuna and eat it with some chips. If I was lucky to even have, have, have chips, now I can go ahead and go, uh, you know, maybe to a restaurant every once in a while that wasn't more than 20 bucks, you know, stuff like that. So um, <clears throat> I went ahead and um, was doing all that. Uh, when, uh, when 2020 hit, um, like right before 2020 hit, I was seeing the red writing on the wall, so to speak. The job, uh, you know, uh, medical field one, was uh was going bad it was going bad because you know state regulations and stuff that 2020 happens with they were like you know locked down <clears throat> no uh no hospital visits no um you know no uh, a whole lot of stuff was, was happening where i wasn't uh, i wasn't able to make a lot of money you know and uh you know i because i wasn't offering a lot of services because a lot of things were closed at the time um <clears throat> the the other jobs i was seeing uh <coughs> excuse me it's cold outside. It's uh, actually 30 degrees. <laughs> I'm just trying to warm up a little bit, so please bear with me. Um, uh, the other job, um, people started hiring people out outside of the country, you know, um, virtual assistants that could promise to do the same things that I was doing. They could uh, not only promise doing it, uh, they would charge $2 a day is what I, what I was told. I don't know the validity in that, but uh, that's not very much money. And, um, people that are cheap are, are, are quick to replace you for somebody cheaper, you know? Of course they, I, I you know, I could be biased. I think I, I, I don't just think, I know I did a better job. Uh, I provided a better quality. 
However, people started using that, um, using those services. They, it got really big. So I was seeing the writing, writing on the wall, <clears throat> and um, I actually should take a step back. For all that, I wanted to go ahead and um, open a business myself. So I spent a lot of money on, um, on a LLC. I went ahead and uh, you know used Legal Zoom and set up uh, carpet cleaning stuff. So this is right before stuff happened in 2020. I set it up. I spent thousands of dollars that uh, that I saved up. I spent uh, you know uh, money on uh, uh, marketing on a website. I built it myself. Um, a marketing campaign. I was going to do. Uh, I, I I did. Uh, the graphic designs for um, for uh, mail and uh, poster cards, and I spent you know top dollar to get them really nice with the UV protection, front and back. It looks like a beautiful photo of you know before and after on carpet, and tile, and um, you know upholstery, and um, you know uh, the whole works, right? And I spent a lot of money on the machines for it too, and I spent a lot of money on the cleaning solutions. And I also uh, went ahead and went to friends and uh, people that I knew, even even people that weren't my friends. I offered to go ahead and do their their uh, the place for free, so I can get some good uh, pictures, and then they could give, leave me an honest uh, feedback on the website, you know. And uh, that you know I had all that going when 2020 happened. Nobody was letting me in. I uh, you know so I spent a bunch of money on uh, on a business that just wasn't going to happen. Uh, because nobody's letting you in it's their social distancing and all that stuff with every with uh, writing on the wall I basically was uh, replaced by virtual assistants that were uh, uh, from people from Philippines if I remember correctly so I was trying to figure out what uh, what I needed to, uh, to do yeah, you know I need to pick up a new skill set I'm not gonna be able to keep the place that I'm in just it just you know it just wasn't working out you know uh, it didn't matter how hard I worked how much of a slave I was every like you know just kept getting hit basically that's what it felt like kept getting hit like every every door I tried to touch or anything that I would put money where the mouth my mouth is willing to do it just wasn't enough so um I, I was looking okay with, with everything locked down and closed you know what can I come across and I come across truck driving I don't know anything about driving a semi I don't even know anything about pushing a trailer but you know I am single I have no children I don't have a wife I have don't have family um, you know, friends that I have, I, I, I'm not really close with, you know, I can go anywhere and, uh, it looked like the money was good. It looked like uh, the industry was good and it was definitely something that they can't lock out. It was, uh, you know, an emergency type thing where, uh, you know, you're a special worker, you know, you can go out and, and I, I like traveling and I like driving cars, but I never had any experience. So I went ahead and I, uh, applied for a trucking school and, uh, not only, you know, it wasn't just a school that you went to. It was uh, it was a mega carrier, and a mega carrier uh, would go ahead and help you uh, uh, get your CDL, right? So you get your CDL uh, Class A, uh, and when you would go ahead and get your CDL, um, you know, it's free as long as you agree to work with them for X amount of time. So before going there, because of all the lockdowns and stuff like that, I actually had to go ahead and get my um, my Class A permit, and then I had to get um, uh, my tanker endorsement, and. Uh, this particular mega carrier um, wants your tanker endorsement not to drive tankers but uh, because you're pulling reefer which is refrigerator so you're pulling refrigerator units and some of them could be all all milk and so if you have a tanker endorsement that covered them on their insurance uh, part uh, not about driving an actual tanker but uh, yeah, it didn't it didn't seem like it added up too much so I go through trucking school and um, there's a lot of you know there's a lot of stuff that I'm gonna make longer form content on that I can go into more detail and actually share the you know experiences and some funny stories and then you know some some other stuff. This is I'm trying to keep uh, not not too long, but so I'm gonna try to get to the meat and potatoes of things if you understand. Uh, so go through trucking school, boom, and I mean I got my permit first, all that stuff. Go to uh, trucking school at the make at the maker carrier. Uh, I'm a rock star there. I make all sorts of friends. Normally, I'm very introverted. Um, you know, it takes a it takes a while for me to warm up to people. You know, historically at least, it's kind of hard for me to, to look at myself and you know uh, tell you how you know how I was. <clears throat> but nonetheless, I go in there and I don't know nothing. And I got great education. You know, I had a whole lot of stuff going on. Uh, I could go ahead and uh, you know go into it. I, I passed my my uh, passed my uh, my CDL very first time. Uh, it was great. It was felt felt ex, you know excitement. It was um, one of the, uh, probably one of the hardest things I've ever done that I actually was able to to, to succeed in. 
you know, especially with uh, how many failures I've had in my life. And uh, I have a lot of failures because I try a lot. I don't just try for a little bit and then give up. You know, I try until I don't see any progress for a long time or it just doesn't seem like it adapts to me. But I've, you know, I, I tried and I've really applied myself like I, I do to everything I do. I don't ever do it, you know, small little portions or anything like that. I, I really go in on it, you know, basically all in. <clears throat> I guess I should mention that when I did this, because I knew I couldn't keep my house, because I didn't have, a, you know, I couldn't pay rent and stuff like that, that I could go ahead and go to trucking school, not have to have, not have that to, to pay for. I still had some other stuff that I needed to pay for. You know, I had got, I acquired myself a new car at the time. Uh, well, I had I had gotten my new car in uh, like around 2018. So got myself a car, all that good stuff. <clears throat> so I still had a car note. I still had some other kind of bills. You know, you can have a cell phone bill. Um, did owe some uh, money for medical stuff. So I, I was in debt and I was looking to get out of debt, but I thought, okay, I could be on the truck for a while and not having to pay that, I can catch up. You know, I can catch up on stuff and then maybe I can, you know, save some money uh, as well. So um, I go ahead and I go through trucking school and uh, I get hired on once I get my, uh, my class A. I had to be with a trainer for um, like 30,000 miles, but I ended up staying a little bit more than 50,000 miles and that's because it just the way it worked out there was um, a huge uh, backlog on getting a truck when you uh, when you uh, you know uh, leveled up or whatever when you're no longer with your um, your trainer um, you would get yourself a, a, a new truck or a used truck <clears throat> and then you're out on your own <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> so um, I go ahead and do that uh, love to make a, you know future videos all about that uh, my experience with uh, uh, the actual trainer after I got my license and I was in there this was excellent this old school dude uh, you know taught me everything man like there was people that got trainers that were just pure garbage you were nothing but a steering wheel holder you didn't know how to back you didn't know how to follow your wheels you didn't know um, certain you know a lot of stuff you didn't know how to do the paperwork with the bills of lading you didn't know um, you know you didn't know how to uh, you know follow you know literally follow your wheels and not always do a 45 alley dock or S turn alley dock you know there's a bunch of terms for it <clears throat> you know I could do a 90 I could you know taught me how to back and these and, and th these are these are very extreme uh, maneuvers like when you just get your license you don't know really how to do it before you get your license you basically are are learning and studying and training uh, to pass and get your license the real training happens after you get your license you know that's how that works and they even tell you that stuff so it's not just words out of my mouth they're like hey every day that you have this license um, and every day that you're driving trucks you're gonna be learning you're gonna be learning man you'll you'll learn you know different states you'll learn different um, carriers you know you'll learn stuff about receivers and shippers you'll learn stuff about uh, loading docks you'll learn stuff about live unloads you'll learn stuff about dropping hooks there's 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 you know every place is almost different there's a lot of similarities but there's uh, a lot of differences as well <clears throat> you know I go ahead and I do that and uh, you know I get my get myself a truck everything's going cool um, I end up uh, getting somebody on the truck with me I ran teams they, they asked me uh, one of the things for me to get a truck faster is, is would I be interested in having somebody uh, I run teams with I said yeah sure so I was in the truck uh, for a while I ended up having somebody get on the truck and uh, he was uh, he was a steering wheel holder um, uh, because his last trainer never trained him right so he had his uh, he, he did pass his, uh, his training and stuff like that but he just did not know how to back didn't know how to do the paperwork I went ahead and I took my time and showed him how to back and he was actually uh, getting pretty good at it and um, uh, you know he just always needed a spot you know he was uh, unsure of himself needed confidence needed to make sure that he didn't hit anybody when he's doing his thing and uh, you know he'd uh, you know have, a, have an anxiety a little bit you know he'd get riled, you know riled up and in time you you know you get used to it a little bit it's still never always gone I mean it's still it's it, in my opinion it's never gone it, it keep, you know you could use it to keep sharp so um, he ended up uh, quitting, uh, quitting at some point, and uh, yeah, when he quit, uh, when he quit, um, yeah, I told him at that point, like, uh, like I'm good, man. Um, I'll uh, I'll still roll the truck; it's no problem. And he's like, no, no, uh, we want you to take that truck back because we have a team that's going to use it, and it was a brand new Freightliner. And I said, okay. He's like, you know, <clears throat> drop it off over here, and then you know, come over here, and blah blah blah. Where I dropped it off at was uh, where um, I also had long-term parking where I had my car at. I went ahead and brought, you know, brought the truck, uh, well, brought the tractor in, 
course I actually had a you know a trailer with me too. Uh, brought a trailer in with me, brought the tractor. It went over it, so it was in good condition. Everything was cool. Um, they said if I wanted to get a new truck, come over to um, this uh, you know special location. It was you know a couple states away. I ended up driving there, and uh, you know because I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get some of the crappy truck since I I don't agree to go ahead and run teams. <clears throat> I'm driving there. And while I'm driving there, I get a phone call from somebody I know, and they uh, they offer me a job. They're like, "Hey, you can uh, you can run this account, man. You know, you can run this account, and uh, you know, uh, you're home every single day. You don't have to do OTR anymore, and uh, stuff like that." And it's telling me that you know you probably won't find something better than this. So you might have to you know you have to show yourself a little bit, you know, uh, show show the skills you have. And, uh, but that they need drivers here and this is actually a fun account. That's what I was told. The guy actually got something like $3,000 just to recruit me and, and, and the guy was, you know, my buddy and that's why he called and stuff like that. I'm happy that he got that money. Um, you know, but, uh, I, a lot of it was fluff. A lot, you know, a lot of it was like, Hey, you'll never find something this, that, you know, this great. I've been with the company for four years, you know, roll with it type of thing. So I think uh, I think he uh, put it on a little bit thick, and it sounded good, and I was already going in that direction. So I said, "Okay, I go ahead and go to uh, go and uh, you know talk to their um, recruitment people. You know, I have to take a hair follicle test, and I think uh, a urine uh, urine sample as well, and uh, do all this stuff. I end up getting an apartment um, within a couple of days. I had saved money while I was on the road, and had worked on my credit, so I go ahead and get an apartment. Now this is the place that I lost." So if you're bearing with me, um, I get myself an apartment. I work at the job for six months. In that six months, um, I was, uh, you know, they they did a lot of illegal stuff, man. And the illegal stuff they did was, is you know, like, you know, driving with uh, air uh, air leaks. You know, I did not get along with my dispatchers, man. Uh, and there's a whole lot of reasons why I didn't get along with them. All the drivers loved me. I had so like the drivers had such a high respect for me, you know. An uh, older dude, or it didn't really matter who it was. If the driver was sliding his tandems, and I'd be like, "Hey, what hole do you? Uh, what hole are you going for? Oh, you're going for, uh, you know, um, your third hole on the tandem. I'll, I'll signal to you. You know, they saw me always popping my hood and doing pre-checks. They always saw me doing uh, pre-planning. You know, uh, there was over 50 different places uh, on this account that went ahead and delivered, and I was new. And I also asked a lot of questions, and I'm sociable. However, I, I didn't talk to the, the people in the office this way. The people in the office this way is like, what do you got, you know? And I was like, you know, I was nice and I had manners, but I wasn't on that friendly stuff. I was on friendly stuff with, with drivers like, hey, uh, hey, man, what do you know about this delivery? Uh, you know, I'm being sent here. Oh, okay, cool, man. Hey, man, I, I, I see that you don't have the, uh, your, uh, the door's not closed all the way. Let me boot it a couple times. Let me help you out. And they would do the same, same thing for me, you know? So a lot of stuff happened when I was, um, when I was working there and uh, like the person who trained me, if I remember correctly, but something like over 20 years that he's been driving trucks for. He's only been DOT inspected once. This company, I was DOT inspected five times. Five times. So DOT inspection means you get pulled over and they check everything. And uh, every single time, I, I was perfect. No tickets, no nothing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I had to go ahead and reclip this. Uh, I had to check something outside, make sure nobody's you know trying to peep up on me. But let me finish uh, finish the story. So uh, <clears throat> my point on that was uh, DOT inspections, right? Dude, I was trained with, only ever been inspected once, and it was no big deal. He was like, yeah, you know, it's really not like that. My experience on the road was totally different. I mean, this new company is regional, so I used to do OTR. I would like to explain something. Uh, OTR means over the road, all 50 states. Um, you know, at any given time, just running around. And I ran real hard too, so I'll make videos about that as well. You know, go into detail of just how many miles, how many hours a day I work, and stuff like that. So, in this particular company, I've been inspected five times. If you uh, fail inspection, it does hurt the company you work for, and um, it also uh, hurts you. Uh, it will lower um, their uh, their score, but then it also uh, lowers yours. I have all five, so I'm really really good. So DOT was always on top of us, you know, checking us out and stuff. Some people passed, some people didn't. A lot of people were, you know, starting to get, uh, you know, dirty with it and, you know, would get tickets and it's not good uh, to get that stuff. You know, you gotta take your career serious and do what's right. That's how I was taught. 
in school they taught us the the proper way of um when we get inspected what we're supposed to say what we're supposed to do our hands always stay on the steering wheel if we reach for something we tell the officer what we're doing when they ask for the bills of lading we don't just you know when they ask us what we have inside of our trailer we have to know is general merchandise is it strawberries is it uh you know uh uh you know what what, what do you got is it a meat load is it, you know uh you have to know what you're carrying. You have to know the weight. You have to know the weight on your axles. There's a lot of stuff that goes into this. I, I won't bore you with all the details, but a driver knows, you know, what's up, right? So um, that job, um, things weren't good between me and the dispatchers at all. Um, some of it's my fault. I do take accountability. I wasn't going to kiss their butt. I was not going. You know, I was not going to. Um, uh, you know, be real, real friendly, and I wasn't going to be like, you know, going over the top. I mean, I was working hard. I was making my deliveries. I also was getting used to um, uh, from over uh, over the road to uh, to doing regional, and I was driving at night, so regional stuff, right? That's another thing too that I want to give credit to to the person who trained me. I'm not a solar powered driver, which means I don't just drive during sun time. You know, like when it's bright outside, when the sun's up, I drive at night. I can drive at night. I actually prefer night for regional. Um, uh, I did night driving when I was OTR and during the day. I had, like, you know, literally from 12 o'clock in the afternoon till 12 o'clock at night, you know, was, was, was a basic schedule. Sometimes things got turned around, but for the most part, so I got half day and half night. Uh, nighttime is, um, you know, during summer, it's a little bit cooler depending on what area you're at. Um, nighttime can give you the, you know, uh, less traffic. There's also other obstacles. I mean, you know, it's a lot easier and a lot less common for a deer to come right in front of you during daytime and nighttime totally different especially you know, depending on what months it is right so nonetheless um i gotta adjust myself here so nonetheless um i had issues with the dispatcher i had um issues with a lot of the places that uh that i would go deliver at um you know they broke a lot of uh dot rules where you're not supposed to reverse on a service uh, on a service road or a uh, private road some of the deliveries you had to back all the way up on a busy street so at nighttime it was busy but not as busy during day I, I i would imagine right so you have to back it all the way up with oncoming traffic and people are crazy man uh they will drive around you and it it takes 15 seconds at the very least to to turn a uh to turn, turn the truck when you're driving a tractor trailer you got a 53 foot trailer behind you and you can be running you know uh, you know close to or um depending on uh, on your stuff eighty thousand pounds in total you know if you're driving a lightweight you could have a little bit more weight than than that um so i'm told uh but nonetheless um i uh you know there was times when i wasn't used to um some of the the procedures so some of the stuff is me taking accountability um you know if they didn't have very much going on that night and your low man on, on the totem pole like i was you know um you'd have to shuttle trailers but when you shuttle trailers you're not getting paid cents per mile now you're getting paid 15 dollars an hour well when i'm shuttling trailers and all my trailers are buried behind other other companies trailers and stuff i'm not allowed to connect to um anybody's trailer other than ours it's illegal yeah you can get in trouble so i have to wait for a yard dog it was a, a spotter basically and i mean no insult when i call them your dogs that's just what i was taught to call them uh you know they're called spotters they're called gophers and stuff like that i i know them as yard dogs because that's what what a lot of them say yard horse too is uh tell that dude um you know whoever's riding it you know not riding it but driving it hey man i'm trying to get this trailer and it's you know i got three other trailers from a different company here can you move those trailers out of my way because they legally can and uh they could do that and i'll grab one well it takes over an hour to uh to, to, you know for that whole process just to go a couple of miles a couple of miles there and then i'm waiting around till he moves these trailers out of the way so i can connect move that empty over to the, where they want it and uh you're getting paid 15 bucks an hour so when 15 dollars an hour to shuttle trailers and it's taking you a little bit longer than one hour to move one trailer and they want a minimum of five or six of them um man that's less than a hundred dollars a day and you're getting paid 15 bucks an hour well shh, that doesn't sound very good man uh you can turn on um an app you know like gig gig apps and make more money by doing that you know working at uh at mcdonald's paid more than paid more than 15 bucks uh an hour 
you know, or maybe maybe about 15 bucks an hour. I'd much rather do that than have to to do uh, all the stuff for the truck. Uh, truck, it's way too stressful. It's way too much concentration. It's way too dangerous. It's not enough money for the effort that I'm doing. And it's not, it, I wouldn't do it now. It, it, you know, uh, I wouldn't do do that kind of stuff. Where um, you know, for 15 bucks to do that, I didn't care how desperate I was. You know, if if it wait around over an hour to make fifteen dollars, I mean, I, I don't want to sound like a diva or anything. That's and and I don't make very much money, but that kind of concentration, that kind of effort, and that kind of stress, man, is not worth it. You know, at least it wasn't for, worth it for me, and we're not worth it for a lot of people. They um they got upset about a lot of things where um you know they sent me to a location I'd have to be standing out there for a couple hours um to go ahead and get live loaded. And, um, or uh, to get live unloaded in this particular place, man, it's it's seven degrees. Seven degrees outside is winter. And by the way, when, I, when I'm talking about trucking, uh, I have all sorts of awards. I've got Winter Warrior, um, you know, Smith System, all this stuff. Uh, you know, never called in sick every single day working, even when they had to volunteer to, to work on a, on a Friday or Saturday or whatever. I, I threw my hat in the ring. Um, and uh, I wasn't making nothing, dude. And I wasn't making nothing because I wasn't kissing the people's butts. And then I also would tell them, like, can't take this trailer to so at such and such because that's an air leak. Can't do it because the ABS light's on. Can't do it because um, the clearance lights, uh, when the lights are off. Can't do it because my headlight's out. And blah, blah, blah. Like, tons of trouble with the tractor uh, and, the, and the trailers. And they'd be like, uh, or, you know, the trailer um, needs an inspection sticker, man. You know, it, it's overdue from last year. It, you know, I legally can't take that down the road. And for, 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 I guess, for some drivers, they would go ahead and do it. I wasn't going to do it, you know. So when I uh, I was complaining, like, hey, man, I'm going to be out. I have to stand outside my truck, and i got to be waiting by the guard shack. And they want you right there. You know, you can be held up for up to four hours before you get live loaded or unloaded. Uh, at the time, I don't remember which one I was getting. Um, but... I was going to be outside my truck uh, in seven degrees, uh, uh, seven degree weather, with a windshield of one, and I said, "No, dude." Uh, and I wasn't going to get paid very much. I'm like, "No, dude. This is this. This is going to get me sick as a dog. This is uh, this is miserable." And I'm telling you that I believe it's unsafe. In trucking, we use the word "unsafe." Um, it's usually a very big deal because if they persist for me to go and something should happen, like let's say I get sick or I hurt somebody or somebody hurts me, something along those lines, they are held uh, accountable and then can be sued and can, you know, uh, like dispatchers know that, that, that if you talk to safety on the line, safety will come down on them and they could lose their jobs as well. So it's not just being sued. It's just when somebody expresses they feel like something's unsafe, you don't make them do it. If somebody tells me I can't swim and I feel unsafe going in the deep end, I'm supposed to respect that. And we're supposed to have the respect that we are the captain of our own ships. If, if, you, if you tell me that there's an issue with this, then you're supposed to be okay. No, their whole thing was treating it like a boot camp. And what's so messed up about, about, about all this is there was tons of million milers, right? People that have done a million miles. They go inside that office and say such great things about me and we'd get back to me like uh, and i'm not being sarcastic to be like you know this is the you know this is this is how it's supposed to be done man he's out there with the, the hood popped open he's watching out for this person some people's uh fuel cards weren't working so when i was there i already knew to go ahead and you, you know hey man i see the logo here swipe my fuel card you're you know you're good in fuel island um you know watch out i tell people okay hey when you when you get this delivered i started you know the information that i first learned I started spreading onto other drivers, and I didn't act like a like a hotshot about it either, man. I wasn't like you know a super trucker telling people this is how it's supposed to be. They'd be like, you know, oh, I'm being sent over here. I'm like, oh, okay, good. That's a great place because it has plenty of room for you to back. Or hey, Whitman, that place is going to be a little bit tight, man. So you know, just just be careful. Or hey, with this particular place, man, um, instead of blindsiding and uh, and backing it in this way. You may want to do this. This is what a, what, I, what I was taught, and I got recognition from all the other drivers. You know, at first it was like a whole like unity for for for, for nighttime drivers. And then it started being where it was every man for themselves. These night drivers, when they got a route that they didn't want, they were the ones that were pulling the pulling the lines, man, on the on the air brakes. I caught them doing it. 
you know, I caught him doing it. Like, dude, what are you doing? Oh, I don't want to be sent to this location. I know if I do this, um, I'll shuttle trailers, but I'll just uh, do one of them tonight. And then um, I'll tell him that the yard dog uh, didn't show up. I'm like, dude, that's only 15 bucks you're making. He's like, yeah, I would rather do that. You know, me, I'm being, I'm being uh, reprimanded of like, you know, hey, I can't take this trailer. Okay, you're shuttling. Or, you know, hey, I, I can't, um, you know, uh, the tractor's messed up for this. Let me get it fixed. Let me do this. Let me do that. You know, they didn't even let me do it. Like, hey, man, um, you know, air leak. We're overweight. Uh, clearance light out. All those things that I mentioned. You know, they'd be like, you know, you're the captain of your own ship. Are you sure you, you know, you're denying this load? Yeah, I'm denying this load, man. I've already been inspected X amount, and it wasn't just me who was inspected. Everybody there got inspected a lot. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know why? I mean, I, I have an idea why, but I'm not gonna get into it now. Uh, but you know, people got inspected there a lot. They were quick. You know, it's quick to go ahead and do that kind of crap. And then um, uh, when I when I refused uh, to work that night, they uh, they said, uh, you know. Okay, well, we're going to terminate you then. All right. And they tried to, to say, well, we were going to say that this is a voluntary termination that you've done. No. And they're saying, we're going to put it down because you don't have warm enough clothes. And I go, I don't think anybody's got warm enough clothes for a one degree windshield where, I, where, where it's not hypothetical. Like, I could be out there for three or four hours. No, it's like everybody knows at this location, you get trapped in, dude. They're not quick about unloading you. They're not quick about loading you. They all know that you got to park your truck and you got to walk like uh, uh, over a quarter mile and you got to stand by the guard shack and you got to wait your turn. Uh, you know, everybody stands around. Uh, you know, it's not good when it's that cold, man. You know, and it's for, for very low money. Like, no, not going to happen, man. You know, so um, get terminated. Uh, they actually, uh, they didn't even mark it down as a termination on their end. But um, they, they marked it down where uh, I no longer work there. But they told me uh, it was a termination. Just to let you know, this stuff has been videotaped, um, you know, at least audio recorded. I'm not sure if I have it anymore or it could be somewhere else. But, yeah, I would, one of the things you were taught is CYA, cover your, you know I mean? Cover yourself when somebody tells you, no, 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 you need to take it and blah, blah, blah. They peer pressure you and stuff like that. So... I do take accountability. There was things that um, was a learning curve in the beginning, and I would tell them, "Won't happen again." Now I know. Things were a little bit, a uh, little bit. Uh, you know, I'm not quite used to it. Over the road, we drive for three or four days. We're not hooking up five or six uh, trailers a night and doing X, Y, and Z. You know, I'd only get dropping hooks every once in a while. <clears throat> now I understand that a dropping hook should be done within less than 20, 30 minutes. You know, even 10 minutes. You know, uh, when I was over the road, uh, you know, I uh, back in my trailer maybe two or three times a week. I'm, I'm, I'm and I had a, l a little bit more room back then. Like you know, uh, you know, uh, I'd have more room to, to do it. I mean, there was times where things were really tight and things were a little bit hard. But this one had had accounts that were very difficult that I wasn't used to, and it was going to take some time. And uh, I, I'd apply myself. And they started finding any little thing to you know bitch at you about, honestly. Um, Nonetheless, I go ahead and uh, I no longer work there. They don't have me marked down as a termination. No place has me marked down as a termination. I have no tickets, uh, uh, nothing whatsoever, no accidents, no um, uh, no no nothing. I'm I'm stellar, even in personal cars. So my whole life, no tickets, no uh, not not having insurance, not having uh, you know I I'm good on everything, man. You know I I, I keep it uh, I keep it above. You know what I mean? I go ahead and clip this in still on the same t uh, subject I clipped this in because uh, uh, I have my phone next to the heater and it's getting too hot and then I felt like uh, my sweater was you know like too tight around my neck um, so things didn't work out so well with that but I did get some good experience I wasn't making very much money and I was having uh, all all my issues were with the pencil pushers like I was saying before, um, the drivers loved me, respected me, would go in there. Like, and I wasn't being sarcastic. I, I was watching the video a little bit while I was like, you know, trying to get settled again. Um, they would go in there and they would be like, you know, you know, this, this dude right here, man, he was checking the tires. He pumped it up. I would check the tires, oil, um, all sorts of stuff, man. Uh, you know, like I was saying earlier, I'm not trying to repeat myself too much here because I know that this video is, uh, a lot longer than what what I wanted it to be, but 
uh, a lot of it's meat and potatoes. Um, not doing fluff, you know. Uh, I will go into more detail on other future videos because there's a lot to talk about and there's a lot of side stories. So I have a lot of stuff coming to you guys. I really enjoy doing YouTube. I love the support. I love the subscribers. I love people following me. I love the, 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 the prayers. I mean, that really touches my heart and that is just awesome. So even if I don't ever get monetized, <clears throat> I'm, I wanna be on here. I. I I want to be your guys' friends. You know, I, I want to I want to uh, share my story. I want to learn with you guys. I want us to grow together. I want you guys to be part of this journey. And it, it feels funny to me saying, you know, I hope you uh, stick around for my journey when it's it's ours. You know, like this could be our community. This 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 could be really really cool. And I have very high hopes for all that stuff. And um, you know, so you know, rock with me. You know what I mean? So. Um, I go ahead and because of that, I talk to other truck drivers, people that I know, and they're like, hey man, um, you know, I head and talk to a bunch of truckers that I know, friends I went to school with, people that I met while I was on the road, call, text, talk to new people, try to get some advice. Is this normal? I even have some friends that like have been driving trucks for over 20 years, old school dudes that I knew before I even got into trucking, and like, I would, I, none of it was, uh, you know, like, me knowing that they did that was none of my, my decision. It was just something I stumbled on and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I know so-and-so who drives trucks or, hey, this person was driving for a while. I know that they did this. Let me, you know, holler at them. You know what I mean? So um, I go ahead and I, and I call and I talk to people and I get some advice. And I, of course, I'm a man. I make my own decisions, but I'm going to try to inform myself a little bit better. I feel like, you know, you really need to, um, you know, learn about a company first. You know, maybe you, you, you overlook this, maybe you overlook that, you know, some of them were like, you know, when you do regional and you're, and you go home every night or, you know, every day, you know, whether you're driving at night or, you know, during the day, you know, they're going to expect certain things of you. You know, you got some really good experience there, you know, use that to your advantage, you know, five DOT inspections and you passed all of them. So when I go to a company and they look me up and they see what my score is, it's like, boom, you know? It's like, wait a minute, this dude's, you know, he does what he's supposed to. He's not overweight, you know? He doesn't have a tail light out. He doesn't have a clearance light out. He doesn't have a, uh, you know, he does not have a, um, uh, you know, air leak that's, uh, you know, I could, uh, you know, hear or whatever, right? Um, you know, whether they could hear or not, I, I, I don't mess with brakes, so no air leaks. You know, I, I stood on there, I was a very, you know, very very big on the stewardness of keeping things cool why i was like that is is i'm going to tell you is these the, driving those things are extremely stressful there was no chance really of me hurting myself but there was a very big chance of hurting the general public if you don't do your job correctly that is not something i want to live with i do not want to hurt anybody that um you know and it'd be my fault you know i check my mirrors i have my mirrors set up you know, I have all of them set up just the way I like. I, you know, there is no blind spots. I am not, you know, I'm a defensive driver, uh, especially driving that, you know, slow and easy. You know, instead of doing 63, 65, you know, some of the trucks I've drove, you know, would only go to 63, sometimes 65. I'd go 60. I want that extra time to stop. You know, things like that. You know, I really do care about the stuff because I've seen so much stuff, man. I've seen, uh, I don't want to get into it, and YouTube probably has terms of service for, for talking about it, but I've seen a lot of people hurt. Some people aren't coming back, and I do not want that at my hand, you know? And I'm not saying like I'm some perfect person, like, oh, you know, every little thing, I, it's gotta be perfect, but I'm not gonna put anybody at risk, you know? I'm just not gonna do it. And that's what I was trying to talk about where that $15, like, I had people, you know, jumping in front of me, I have people driving on the side of me next to a guardrail when I'm pulling onto the, the freeway. Is that worth $15 for somebody to go ahead and do that? And uh, is there a chance that I might uh, not see them or that they might be dumb enough to keep, keep going when the road is narrowing and I gotta get over and they don't get over in time and they get hurt really bad? No, it's not. I'd rather make nothing that day to make sure that nobody got hurt by my hands in, in that regard. And I, I hope you guys will understand that when you watch this, uh, what seems to be like a very long video. And I hope, and I thank you for sticking, you know, sticking around with me. Um, so I do the research, I do what I can, 
okay, now I'm getting paid hourly. So I, I find a place, I talk to the dispatcher first several times on the phone before I even talk to recruiting. Um, actually, I take that back. I talk to recruiting, I'm like, I'm, I'm not sure about joining until I talk to my dispatcher. I want to meet the people in the office. They seem to go ahead and you know be the ones who put things in actions. So this dude's like a third generation, um, uh, you know, son of a trucker. So he, you know he's got his his father, his father behind him, and however it goes, you know, uh, his family. And he, he seems he seems to, to 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 get it. Like we don't pick up loads to not deliver them. We um, we don't find excuses not to drive. We find reasons of um, you know why something isn't legal. And he and he's okay with it. He's also okay with, um, and I find this out later. He's okay with if you push the envelope or you pass the envelope. You mean you're the captain of your ship. So, with this particular job, I worked there over six months, and, uh, and I, I, I will get to how I became homeless. Just bear with me. Um, why I'm uh, why I'm working there. If I thought spots were were tighter and areas were harder to back in. Uh, this place, this place takes a, the cake on it. It is harder. Um, finding these locations are extremely hard. The pre-planning is very difficult. When you call the receivers and the shippers, they're not answering. Um, you know, to tell you, you know, X, Y, and Z of like this is where people go and stuff like that. You know, um, I'm staying on top of it, it just because it's hard. I'm not backing down from it, but um, it is, um, it is, it is extremely challenging. Thank goodness that I was top of my trainer, um, and I, and I can do it. Thank goodness I have the experience from the old company, where like okay, you know, it, things things were bad there because um, they they treated like you know treated me like a dog, <clears throat> you know, they uh, you know tried to peer pressure me. They hated when I said no. And by the way, when I would tell them air leak, it wasn't like they took my word for it. I'm like hey, the clearance light out. They came out of their dispatch office to go ahead and see. Was I telling the truth? When I told Mayor Leak, and I told where it was, oh, it's right by uh, the passenger side tandem. They came out there and listened. When I told them the tires were bad and I took pictures, they still went out there and took a look. They never, ever took my word for anything. They never did that with, um, you know, for a lot of people. Some people they did, but I was not one of them, I guess, because, you know, lower lower amount of the totem pole. Or maybe, um, maybe they had pressure running downhill where, you know, they have to see it. They always went out there, and they never once said, "Hey, wait a minute, you can take this." They, what they would do is, is like, you know, some of them were said they were ex-drivers. They were like cyborgs, man. They were more dispatcher than they ever were a driver because why would you take it? I had an air leak that was so bad it sounded like fountains dropping. I'm like, before I even get to the freeway entrance, <laughs> both. Bo both my things are gonna pop out. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna be uh, stopped right then and there. I'm gonna be in shutdown mode right then and there. And if there's somebody who's following too close behind me, they're gonna crash into me. And when they crash into me, I'm not gonna my truck and everything else and the cargo, the freight, everything's gonna be fine except for that person is not gonna be here anymore. And I can't do that. I just can't, and I won't. And I'm you know I set my standards and. At the very least, I don't want anybody hurt. At the very most, I just want to keep everything legal and cool. It's my career. It's my license. Even if something happens, I'm the one who's responsible because I'm the one who's driving. To let somebody dictate how I'm doing my job or do I do the job to the best of my abilities from how I was taught and how I was trained and I saw others doing it you know, to a very high standard. And, and it was not like so crazy of a high standard where um, you know, it's, it, you know, any little thing you know, no, uh, it's, it, you know, like, you know, uh, okay, if I have to, um, if I have to, you know, pull my tandems, you know, further, uh, further along so that I can make weight, then I do it. It's not like, I, I want to reiterate that. Not a diva, I just want to do things legal. And that's all, you know. So, <clears throat> I go ahead and, uh, with this place, they're overweight, bad. I'm talking about up to 20,000 pounds overweight. They're paying hourly, so I'm like, okay, now it'll cost you if I have to go ahead and replace a headlight. <clears throat> now it will cost you if uh, if uh, a tire is flat. 
Now you're not just you know telling me to drive on a tire that uh, that won't hold pressure or a tire that's leaking. Now you're not going to tell me to go ahead and grab uh, you know like I go ahead and it, um, you know pull a trailer and get it scaled in and now um, now uh, now it's scaled in. Now you can see the proof. I'm getting paid to do that because it's hourly. So I can go ahead and say, hey, I wasn't sure about this. So I went ahead and went over there, and that's why it took me 10 extra minutes to get this delivery done. I know I normally do it in, you know, four or five hours, and it took me, you know, I don't know, six hours. So an extra 30 minutes, I got it scaled when I went there and scaled when I came back, or I went through a scale house, everything else. A lot of stuff happened uh, with that where the trucks and trailers were always messed up. They pushed the envelope. I got along with dispatch very well. They would say, you know, all right, we understand. They tried to put me in trucks that actually had no insurance. They didn't even have the front steps. You had to go into the, 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 the tractor from the passenger door. And they tried to say that, you know, wait a minute, uh, you know, uh, this, the, this truck is legal. You can take it if you want to. So they were very limited on trucks. They were very limited on uh, what accounts that they ran, you know. Um, and uh, people were cowboys. And I wasn't going to be a part of that. So that kind of stress adds up, man. Like, wait a minute, this trailer is, is is too heavy. You're telling me you think that it's okay because I'm not gonna go buy any weights, weight, uh, you know, scale houses. You know, I, I'm not gonna have to be uh, you know, pulled in. Um, you know, uh, it's raining outside. ABS isn't working because of uh, how how high I'm uh, loaded and you know, like how much weight I'm pulling and everything else. Not gonna take it. So I started losing money, and I was losing faith. Like. I worked so hard, so hard, man, to get my uh, my class A, to get my CDL. I worked so hard, and OTR, yeah, when I worked OTR, no, I didn't have to deal with that stuff. I mean, by the way, with the last two companies I talked about working, so I started off doing reefer, which is refrigerated. The last two was dry van. I much prefer dry van over reefer, just to let you know. Um, but uh, yeah, when I did that, no, it wasn't like that. I did get micromanaged a whole lot, and it did get annoying, but I didn't pull bad trailers. I didn't pull things that were not checked right. In fact, if I wanted to leave a place and it was um, it wasn't uh, correct, they would stop me. I mean, it never happened, but they would stop somebody. Like, wait a minute, your axle weight's not matching up to uh, you know to the macro you sent. You know, go to a scale house. Uh, there's one two miles from you. Go to the scale house or get scaled there. Show us show us uh, the weight. Okay dock back in get it uh, organized tell them to move um you know these pallets towards the back or towards the front or more in the middle however it may work so boom i go ahead and uh i tell them after a certain amount of time i'm not gonna do it man and this whole time i'm doing this i'm barely keeping rent i'm barely keeping up with my apartment i have no furniture in the living room got a few things in the kitchen and I got some stuff on my bedroom a nice bed and of course a TV but I'm, I'm I'm working and I'm staying out there so long that I don't even get to enjoy the stuff that I'm paying for I'm staying out there so long that I'm bare and I'm working so hard for it working so hard to pay these bills and pay this stuff that I'm not keeping yeah well like the, not that excuse me not that I'm not keeping but I'm working so hard for this money and it feels like I'm flushing it down the toilet why this is going on, my car gets broken into twice at the apartments. They bust my window. Bust my window twice. Two different occasions. Busting my window. I had ceramic tint on all my windows. Now I got a, now I got a window that, that's not longer no longer ceramic tint. Nothing stolen. They're looking for 4th of July's left in, in, in vehicles. It's a big thing out here. They bust windows constantly. When I go ahead and I get that window replaced, there's 15 people online, and they're all saying, oh, they got you too, they got you too. All from different apartments, some of them from homes. But yeah, they're like, man, this sucks, dude. Now I, now I can't go to work uh, because I had to wait in line all day. Um, you know, I had to do a police report, and then it costs me over $200 to have a window replaced. And then my my uh, my full coverage insurance is a $500 deductible. Do I tell insurance that? And by me telling them that, <clears throat> they raise my rates. And then on top of that, um, I pay $500 deductible. One second, my windows get busted out two different locations. It cost me over 200 bucks. 
when I get it replaced, uh, people over at the, the, you know, the window glass place or whatever, there's like 15 people. Oh, they got you too and blah, blah, blah. Um, that happened twice. Then I get uh, somebody who uh, rear, rear ends me. <laughs> How they did it, I have no idea. You know, hits the back of my bumper, leaves scratches all over it. No vehicles next to me. So my car is getting vandalized. There are people that, um, you know, there was a pizza man who um, did a, a, a pizza delivery. 60-year-old man just trying to make some money. Gets uh, gets unalived right in front of my apartment. They catch the person who does it. But crime is going crazy. So now I'm working so hard to keep something that I don't, I, I, I don't even have time to enjoy. And that it's a roof over my head, but it's it's costing me everything that I'm making. I'm in an industry that um, is very toxic and very hard to do things the right way. And, um, you know, uh, why am I doing all this? And then suddenly, I'm not, I, I don't want to drive trucks. And there's a lot of stuff that happens when I'm driving trucks, man. I had two different locations. People pull out the 4th of July out on me trying to keep things with the with the guidelines i hope you understand i will make other videos so i ask you to subscribe so you can get the full story on and the details on um, on other segments so it can all make sense this will make sense but then you'll get more clarification with the other content that you watch in the future that i'm going to create so um yeah uh tons why am i doing all of it so stop driving trucks start working doing other jobs Everything that I'm doing, I can't seem to save any money. I can barely pay my rent. I'm not eating. I'm not buying food. No extras. Everything is just costing so much. And it's everything. And I got to the point where I could barely pay rent, man. I'm selling old video games I had from a long time ago. I'm not buying anything. I'm shoes that are... Are, are basically talking to me you know, and uh, you know they're, they're messed up you know no socks socks with holes in them I'm, I'm trying to skimp everything people are like oh you know you know like you know in my opinion at least you know how how are you telling me that you're you're, you're, you're barely gonna buy when you got a 30 uh, 35 dollar hat on or a 30 dollar hat on this thing is old I didn't pay 30 bucks for it you know just like people oh how are you homeless, man? You look like you're clean shaven. No, I haven't shaved in two days. It's just good camera lighting. And uh, and what does it have to do with anything? What, because I, I, I was able to shave? You didn't see me just, uh, you know, a few days ago where it had been two weeks where I didn't shave. I tried to keep my appearance up because I want to look a certain way because it makes me feel better, you know? I tried to stay hygienically clean so that I don't smell because, uh, because of myself. And then I'm also self-conscious about that stuff. I don't want to look like I'm homeless. I don't want to look really rough off. I am trying to do my best. If anything, I want to be able to go, wait a minute, nobody knows, you know, when I'm, when I'm working. Nobody knows that I'm struggling so hard. Nobody knows that I'm sleeping in my car. Nobody knows, the, you know, that, uh, that I, uh, I had two people run up on me and I, I didn't give up my stuff, you know? And those are videos that are gonna be coming, you know? I. I've had to defend myself a lot out here, and I, I really don't know if it's just me or it's just because people can be so desperate. They don't care. They just want to. They just want to take from you. I don't. I couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. I mean, I have an idea, and we can get you know get into it later. But like I said, but uh, nonetheless, um, I could barely keep the apartment. I had to sell my a lot of my stuff just to make do, and I'm like, well, what's the point, man? Maybe I'll save more money. I can't keep my house anyway. Well, my apartment. I can't keep my apartment anyways. I'm going to have to live in my car. I'm going to I'm gonna have to do what I have to do. So when people are like, you know, you're homeless, get a job. I got a job. I do gig apps. On top of which, I go to Home Depots. And when I'm at Home Depot, I'm out there waiting, trying to get, you know, picked up from the labor pool. I walk around. I talk to, to the people that, you know, that that could use some help with whatever their improvements are, you know, uh, with their house or, you know, outside, like building a shed, you know, doing painting or whatever. I talk to them and I'm like, hey, I'm actually struggling right now. I'm just trying to pay some bills. You know, I come off real nice and cool. 
where it's like, you know, I'm not soliciting, but I, I, I do throw it out there like, hey man, cheap labor right here. Oh, hey man, oh, that's a lot of concrete you're putting in there, dude. Let me give you a hand and start loading up these, uh, you know, load up your Volvo station wagon with concrete stuff. You know, there's a lot of little hustles that I, I try to do and they're all legal because I, I that's just who I am. I just try to do what's, uh, you know, you know what my heart says. And uh, so that's why I'm homeless. I'm homeless because I have a very hard time paying for uh, rent. I, uh, I work very hard. A lot of the stuff that I do is very stressful and very hard. I'm not saying that I work harder than another person. Everybody's different. Everybody has their preferences. Driving trucks. I'm still, I still have my Class A. I still have, uh, I still have my, uh, my DOT physical card. I could literally jump in a truck right now if I wanted to. I'm having a very hard time uh, finding places that I, you know, I don't even know, I don't even know if I can drive a truck anymore. And what I mean by that is, is I'm not going to bend those rules. Things, things have gotten worse, or worse in trucking. But I know this video is very long. I do appreciate you. Thank you for watching all of it. You're a rock star.